in your research finding this place, what were you specifically looking for as far as land goes? I, I wasn't looking for any kind of land. I was looking for a climate. All of the wine books said that it was the soil that determined the quality of the wine. But with Tempranillo, uh, it's only really grown to excellence uh, in earlier history in Rioja. No one else was doing that, correct, in the United States? Uh, no one was producing a bottle of wine with it. Right. No one. Just Tempranillo. Yeah. And there's no record of it ever having been done. But we came along with this interest in Spanish culture and Tempranillo at a time when Tempranillo rose to excellence in another area of Spain, 150 miles away from the epicenter in Rioja. What, was, what did they share? They shared a climate, almost identical. And where did I find that in America? Southern Oregon. The climate is why what brought you here, but the property itself is incredibly special. Talk a little bit about the fault line. And Dumb luck. Science drove us to the climate. Uh, we stumbled on this piece of property. Nice. Basically, the vineyard is, is a huge experiment. Uh, I'm a scientist, Earl's a scientist, so we treat everything very scientific, and it was very easy to see that everything is quality driven here. Yeah. And the goal is to make the best Tempranillo that we possibly can. Andrew and I have similar palates. We, uh, we taste everything together every year, but he makes all the decisions. I'm not, uh, I'm just sort of tasting with him and putting in my two cents. I think that's the best job. <laughs> Doing the tasting. <laughs> and the two cents, yeah. Getting to Oregon Wine Experience, I know for you, it's so important for both of you to be involved with, with events that include wineries from across the state. It's this sense of family when it comes to other wineries. Why is it important for you two to be involved within Oregon Wine Experience? I mean, it's a wonderful venue with the wines and they, over the years, it's just become bigger and bigger and better and better. And I think that's so important, but that also is what helps bring in the money for all those kids. That's sort of our philosophy. I guess it gets back to the courtyards in Spain. Yep, gotta be a team player. And the wine for the barrel auction is very special. Yes, it is. It's very special. It's not, it's not like anything we bottle. Talk to me a little bit about this wine, this very exclusive wine that you're creating for the barrel auction this year. So it's, it's very convenient that that time of year when the OWE is happening, that it's at the very end of my bottling season. So I have all of my high-end reserve wines left and they're all in tanks. So I just started just doing the mad chemistry thing, just blending together with different beakers and graduate cylinders. and making sure that you know, Tempranillo dominates the blend for sure, but including a little bit of Malbec or some Syrah in there, just creating this highly exclusive high-end wine. And once I get the blend that I like, which might take 10 or 15 different blends, then I will assemble one barrel of it and put it back into that barrel and then bottle it at a later date. A wine that no one else will ever get. It's like a unicorn wine, right? It, it doesn't exist except in the cellar of 10 people.